YouTubers, it going the Goat House is back with the New York Football Giants preview, what to watch, players to watch, games to watch, and more. We did more than half the NFL teams for the series playlist on the channel with those, and we will finish off and get to every NFL team. I'll make sure to comment which teams I should do next. New York Giants, I think the big question with them is for people, can they get back to two years ago? Can they get back on track? Last year, very underwhelming. But then again, people forget that it kind of started off as a disaster. You know, with the injuries, the offensive line, you know, Andrew Thomas being out, offensive line being terrible, and that kind of caused Daniel Jones to get injured. And I, it might sound ridiculous, but I thought they were kind of competitive throughout the year, especially at the end, you know, with DeVito in, given, given their situation. I, most teams would kind of throw in the towel and not be so competitive. They went on a streak, and it felt like, are, are the Giants doing something here? So I think that's a decent sign for what's to come here. So I will break, break down some things to watch here. Number three, uh, the defensive changes and scheme adjustments, how these players kind of adapt to that because they had Don Martindale, defensive coordinator, and what, what was his game? I mean, it, what was his scheme? It was a whole lot of man coverage, insane amount of man coverage, and a whole lot of blitz, right? And he was a good coach, good coach, and, and it was uh, kind of a headache for teams to deal with. But I guess if there was a knock on him, maybe with the, why the Ravens moved on from him, it, is that it, it does kind of get predictable. It's pretty good for most of the season. It's a headache, again, for teams to deal with that blitz. And for the teams that don't have a great offense line or a, a smart quarterback, it, it's a factor. Like, every team should do that against those types of teams, those struggling teams. Uh, but it does, you know, if there was a knock, it does start to get a little predictable for Big time, big games, you know, playoff football, and that's what the Ravens saw. Even though they knew he was a a, a good defensive coach, and and they move on to Shane Bowen now, right? Uh, who's coming from Tennessee, and a lot different, a lot different. He he mixes it up a little bit, which is the positive, I guess. So there are positives what I'm talking about, but there could be negatives here because. You know, Shane Bowen, a lot, he'll mix it up a little bit, but a lot of zone defense. And he, he don't get me wrong here, run some man, but a lot of zone defense. But, you know, what he had the most of, you know, probably cover four. And I thought that was kind of proven when they drafted Tyler Newbin. Because when, you know, doing the evaluation, the scouting report on Tyler Newbin, I was like, that that's a. That's a zone, specifically a split safety zone covered safety and, and you know, cover four, cover two, and that it kind of aligns there. It kind of makes some sense that they'll probably, Bowen will continue to run what he ran. And so this could be, this is a little bit of a question, you know, like how, because they built Martindale's defense, you need such specific type of players to fit that heavy man, heavy blitz defense. So they built it to fit the, the built the defense to fit his defense, right? So there's still a lot of those players there. So how will they adjust? Will it be a little bit more of a learning curve? Will they have to take time and add? When they've added some players, uh, like we talked about, you know, Brian Burns a big one. Not that that a player like that doesn't really isn't really affected by these different schemes, you know, as good of an edge rusher as he he is, but will it look back on track to what I was talking about? Will it take time to get more of Bowen's type players or like the future defenses type players? Will it be too much of an adjustment? Will the players that were playing good continue to play good? I, I don't really have an issue. Like Dexter Lawrence going to continue to play very well. Uh, Okereke was a guy that was signed last year and end up uh, exceeding expectations, but he's going to switch schemes once again, which is, there's a position where it's the most tough for switching schemes like that. It's linebackers. So keep an eye on the linebackers, how they play. So that's kind of the question. How will they adjust? Will it take some time? But the positives are that even though Martindale was a good defensive coach, uh, you know, it, 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 got, it gets that type of defense gets pretty predictable. I think the defense they're going to run now is actually a lot less predictable. So that makes sense. You know, that actually could be the positives there. So that's definitely something I'm watching for. We're going to talk about more about Deontay Banks, which factors into this as well. We'll talk about him more in this video. But, yeah, the, the, he was a big-time man coverage corner out of Maryland and, and really fit Martindale's defense, like perfect fit. Now, more of his own defense. Can he do it? We'll talk about that, again, more in a little bit here. But the, those are where the questions are at with the, with the adjustments on defense. And... Um, yeah, and it could be it could be better, it could be worse, it could be all the same. We'll have to wait and see. Number two, I, this is kind of a funny one, but serious at the same time. Like the Giants really could master the dink and dunk offense. And I think most people don't 
like the, they don't want to hear that. Like, we don't want to be a dink and dunk offense. People make fun of the dink and dunk offense, but when it works, it works. And Giants two years ago, I thought that, you know, I don't want to say their full identity was dink and dunk, but and they won a lot off that. They won a lot of, you know, running the ball with Saquon, Saquon Barkley and, uh, you know, throwing the ball underneath and Daniel Jones using his legs and they would kind of open up the, the surprise, you know, the deep shots or like the surprise plays that you weren't expecting. And I, I think they're kind of built to, I actually think more now than ever to succeed. So they kind of can bring back what they had, what was successful two years ago, but I think and some, and you may go, well, they lost Saquon Barkley, but they added Malik neighbors. And if we're talking about a dink and dunk pass offense and, and what I loved about that, that offense and why they did it well two years ago, it was so fast. It was like they got the ball out so quick, and it wasn't. There's some teams that are like, you know, quarterback sitting there, sitting there, sitting there. All right, hit the check down, and it turns into a dink and dunk offense, not by design, and those are the bad ones, right? But it was, I thought it was designed pretty well. But adding Malik Neighbors, and don't get me wrong, Malik Neighbors is more than a dink and dunk off uh, receiver, I guess. he's He can do anything. I, I believe he can do anything, but he is insane after the catch and that is perfect for this type of offense getting the ball out quick screen passes end arounds uh quick slants gonna see a lot of those quick slants Wandale Robinson some of the some you know neighbors has way more to his game but some of the similar play styles there for him uh and they they made sure that they added maybe one of the best pass catching backs in the draft a guy that used to be a receiver not too long ago and Tyrone Tracy Jr. They made that a point to do that. So they're going to throw him the ball a lot, a lot in the backfield. They're going to just, their backs in general. I think Eric Gray can be do, could, could be good doing that. Singletary, decent as well, and he'll be the starting back. Um, but I think they'll mix those guys up a little bit more. But why then they can master it is they're going to be, I think neighbors who we'll talk about more in this video will be a big part of that. I mean, it's going to be a factor. Teams are going to have to come up. They're going to have to come up and worry about that. And that, what people don't talk about, is how you master the dink and dunk. You want to open up other things later in the game. And they have players like Darius Slayton and Jalen Hyatt. These guys are deep threats, the home run hitters. And I think because how quick, how successful they will be underneath, led by neighbors and the rest of this group, uh, I think they can really open up things for neighbors, for Slayton, for Hyatt, down the field. Uh, and that could be pretty fun. So they actually can do it the right way. Not not the... Because nobody really, you know, gave the Giants shit when they were succeeding the year they were winning that, you know, because they did it right, you know. So if you do it right, no one's going to talk shit about your, your dink and dunk or whatever you want to call it, offense. I, I more so don't like the teams that, like I talked about, teams that really don't want to do it but are ending up doing it. Uh, and that's all they got. They're so one-dimensional. So I, I think the Giants can be much more than that and maybe get back on track. Uh, I think staying healthy and Daniel Jones kind of playing to where he was playing, and that's a tough part too. Maybe teams kind of figure out how to game plan for him, and we'll kind of wait and see. I don't know if we can base everything off of last year. That will happen last year, but we'll see. But it, it should be quick. should be really fast. I, I'm going to keep saying it throughout this video. I can't wait to watch neighbors in this offense. Uh, number one, I think this pass rush can be elite. And if you have an elite pass rush, uh, you w you can win football games by that alone. And, uh, you know, looking at Brian Burns, Kayvon Thibodeau, Dexter Lawrence. I mean, that three-headed monster, and they got other guys that can play up there. And we're going to go more in depth here in a second. But that three-headed, it's more than just about three-headed monster. We'll, again, we'll get to that in a second. But that three-headed monster is ridiculous i mean those three guys i mean those those are like i'm not a giants fan those are my guys right there like dexter lawrence i was super high on him in the draft i was probably higher on I mean, everyone was high on him i suppose but i knew this guy was gonna be legit he was already polished as a run stuffer and i knew he could add more to his game when getting after the quarterback he's done that he's an elite player i think already um and if you don't call him that i think you will be after this year shane bowen co coached a similar guy in jeffrey simmons too so i think that's fantastic um and then Brian Burns been a huge Brian Burns supporter. I think people have been severely underrating him because I think it's because they know what he could be deep down. I mean, they, they expect him to be like a 15 to, you know, or higher sack total guy. And maybe he hasn't, and he hasn't gotten that. So people look at the stats and go, eh, like maybe he's, you know, some people almost want to say he's overrated, but I'm going to say the opposite. I think people are looking at the stats too much. If you actually watch, if you actually watch Brian Burns, he is in on a lot of plays. He is, 
you know, get, he gets what, like nine sacks. But if you watch those games, he was so close to having double that even. And it sounds ridiculous, but it's true. He is winning reps. He is right there in the quarterback's face. He's hurrying the quarterback a ton. He is on the brink of having an insane amount of sacks in a season. Like he is actually, he, he is not that close based on the numbers, but if you watch, he is that close. Uh, and he was a raw prospect coming out of Florida State. Like he wasn't, I think he's ahead of schedule just based on play. You know, stats, maybe you would disagree, but, and I think the stats have been good. Like, it's not like he's had bad stats, but uh, not a huge stat guy. Just watch the damn game. And and, and th- this guy is on the brink of being an elite player. And most people will say no, uh, but he's that good. And Kayvon Thibodeau, a big fan of him in that draft class. Um, I, I think he's been better than people think. He's He's been another guy that's been, like, productive, just getting pressure, causing hurries after the quarterback. And, he's, and Tibbs is a guy that, kind of just shows up in those big moments he showed it at Oregon and he showed it the last two years so far in his early career he's only going to get better so I think it's a really good group with a lot of upside and you know Thibodeau what's going to make him better too is adding Brian Burns on the opposite side of him as he progresses himself uh, but Shane Bowen look at him in Tennessee uh, I you know a big way they got pressure was more than just having guys go rush the quarterback. You know, they had Harold Landry on the outside. Daniqua Autry was a guy that played outside, inside. But they had Arden Key, and they did the same thing when they had Bud Dupree as well. But Arden Key would be a high-end rotational piece that would kind of line up in different spots, even though people know him as an edge rushers, and get pressure in different ways. And the Giants have Aziz Ajilari, kind of just who's a really solid pass rusher if he's healthy, young pass rusher, just kind of sitting behind the, the two expected starters and – so I'd watch out for him to be very much involved in that rotation, but could we see all three of those guys in crucial passing downs on the field at the same time? So uh, not only do they have the players up front, the pl- the starting players that just straight up can get pressure, but I think they're going to find it you know, with the rotation and different looks that they're going to give different ways to get pressure. Um, so I'm, something to get really excited about here you know, with the Giants and their defense. Uh, under Shane Bowen, even though I think a lot of people were maybe disappointed they don't have Martindale anymore, but we will see. Uh, the three players to watch, it was really tough to choose three uh, for the Giants. Some teams it's like that, but uh, going to choose a second-year corner, Deontay Banks, another guy that I really liked in the draft. And why he's up here is, well, the obvious that like he, he was really good down the stretch of last season in man coverage, being on an island and uh, just being a great athlete and a smart player, uh, and we know that he has upside, we know that he can continue to grow, so that's to watch out for him being a breakout player. I mean, it wouldn't really be a surprise breakout player, but a big thing here, to, what, what to watch, and kind of a question, we kind of touched on it a little bit already, is they are switching you know, coverage, you know, they're switching schemes, and they're switching coverages here that they're going to run a uh, majority of the time, and Banks was a man coverage expert at Maryland and he was drafted by Don Martinale and the Giants a man coverage defense and now they bring in Shane Bowen which again Bowen will mix it up it's not like he's not going to run man coverage I think specifically we'll see a bit of two man under really uh, but he does run, run a lot of zone coverage he does run he does run a lot of cover four so this will be a little tougher for Banks. These young, speedy corners, usually they're better in man coverage. And, you know, you have to, the difference between man and zone, you have to be smarter in zone. Man, you have to be just more athletic and physical at the same time. So you can argue which one's tougher. Uh, But, so he's going to have to, you know, use his head a little bit more. But he he did have some decent moments on tape, I remember. Actually, I think my favorite moment ever, uh, you know, when scouting him was a cover three moment. So he's shown some life that he could play in zone coverage it's going to take just a little bit more thinking you know a little bit more uh keeping your eyes on the quarterback um so i'm curious to see the adjustments i think he's going to be fine it's just one to watch here with with an up-and-coming um potential future star corner here uh number two gonna gonna go brian burns and we, i already kind of rattled off you know why brian burns is on here i think i think he's gonna have a monster season i think it's a really good fit for the shane bowen defense i think it's a really good fit with Dexter Lawrence and Kayvon Thibodeau, Aziz Ajilari, these guys in there. Um, I think he's going to feast. I think he's going to be highly productive. He's a guy that looks better on the field than what the stats show, and I think the stats are pretty solid. But the Giants the Giants knew that. They wouldn't have traded for him. They wouldn't have gave him that big contract if they didn't know that. They know what he's made of, that they know what he can be. And a big reason he's on here, and I'm, I'm going to applaud the Giants for this, 
what they I if you follow me for a long time, I, I always say you can't be afraid to get better. A lot of the net, it's a thing. Teams are kind of too confident in just who they drafted, their own guys, and just those guys pro- progressing, and, and they don't want. They're afraid to go get a better guy to play in front of a guy that they know could be better with more reps, you know, and. and Ajilari is a, a solid pass rusher, and he's had you know some injuries here and there. But and they could have just ran it back with with Thibodeau and Ajilari, but they were like, nope, we have an opportunity to go get a great player that has were whose best football is definitely ahead of him. And they went out and did that, and I love that. I respect the hell out of that. So uh, I think it's going to pay off for them as it should. Uh, I think Brian Burns is. I I think he's going to go crazy in his in his career as a New York Giant. I really do, and it starts right now. So I'm excited about it. I guess the only knock, the only knock we didn't touch on a ton besides Banks Banks is the secondary. It's a young secondary. There's still a lot of question marks on who's going to step up. Uh, you know, so I think the pass rush will make uh, pass rush is more important than than DBs. In, in my opinion, I think most people's opinions. So they're going to make their jobs a lot easier. But if these guys are allowing instant separation, it's going to cause the edge rusher's job, like like Burns' job, to be a little harder. Um, you know, because they could get the ball out quick and they don't really have a chance to get after the quarterback. So hoping none of that happens there. But I guess it's a possibility. That's kind of the questions with the Giants' quarterback play and health, the offensive line play and health. I, I'm not I'm not going to worry too much about the running game. Uh, and I guess it's, we'll say the secondary and who's in there, but I think they have options. That's another thing about Shane Bowen's defense too. I, I think well, what he's what he's got here with the Giants, I think they can mix it up a little bit. I think they give different looks in the secondary. Uh, I think people in the fans' takes. I think they had some takes about the secondary, so we'll touch on that a little bit more then. Uh, and then number one, you maybe thought I was going to go Daniel Jones because there is a lot of questions around Daniel Jones. Like it's it's a lot of of it is on him if the Giants will be good or not. But at the same time. With the, the offense that Dayball is gonna is trying to run, I don't think it's gonna take much. He's got to stay healthy, and I think Drew Locke, even if he has to play, I think he can do a similar job. I think Jones can be better with his legs if 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 he's intact, um, you know, with his with his health. Um, but I think he can do it just as good of a job. So I'm not, I'm actually, I I you know at the end of the day, like how good the quarterback play is is gonna determine how far they can get, but. We're going to be realistic here. The Giants aren't going to win the Super Bowl, you know, so I, I think they're going to be, I think they're going to be all right, whether it's Daniel Jones or, or Drew Locke. They're going to be that same team unless they're just God awful. Then, of course, it's going to hurt the team more. If they're they're playing out of their minds, it's going to help the team more. But Malik Neighbors is the team, is the offense right now, a rookie. Like the, this offense runs through. Malik Neighbors. Like I said, I think Malik Neighbors for this specific, specifically this offense, is bigger and better of a factor than having Saquon Barkley. It might sound like a bold take, but passing game is more important. The Giants, uh, you know, they, they, they ball, he wants to throw the ball, even if it's dink and dunk a little bit. They want to throw the ball. And Neighbors is the guy that's going to create this offense because he's going to win underneath, behind the line of scrimmage, at the line of scrimmage, be just beyond it, and downfield. They'll open up some surprise shots. He is going to touch the ball an insane amount of times. He's going to lead rookies in touches probably. Um, it's going to be as long as he catches the ball, but he's he'll run the ball a bit. They're going to give him some end arounds. They'll create some, some gadget plays, some special plays for him and Wandale Robinson. It, it might be fun to watch. It's probably going to be... It's probably going to be one of the more fun small ball teams to watch, like ever. So, um, hopefully, at least. So, the, the team runs through Malik Neighbors, a rookie. It does. So, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Games to watch. You're going to start in week eight. I think, Steelers, I think it's a pretty similar matchup between the Steelers. I think most people say the Steelers are better. That's fine. I'm not going to debate that. But they're both going to be small ball teams. They're going to throw the ball to their backs. They're going to throw the ball to their receivers underneath. They both got a. Uh, you know, a rookie, a solid rookie receiver. Obviously, neighbors a lot better than Roman Wilson, but I love, I love Roman Wilson. They're going to get it. Russell Wilson's going to dink it and dunk it to him. It's good. It's a, and it's a, you know, growing offensive line, I suppose, on both sides. Um, defensively, I think they should be fairly similar. Um, they got some. They both have big time pass rushers, big time interior players. Um, you know, so I mean, the Steelers probably most people would say are a little bit better, but I think it's a week eight in in Pittsburgh, right when you're you know we're gonna. Tr- Try to learn the true identities of these teams. That can be interesting. And then Week Ten against the Panthers. Yeah, it's a Brian Burns revenge game. So that'll be fun alone. Uh, I think the Panthers will step up this year. I think there'll be some similarities in their passing games. Uh, it should be pretty interesting. 
you know, I think it actually could be a close game. Um, you know, two teams that could be a little sneaky, maybe a little bit more ahead of schedule than people thought. And it's right before the bye week for the Giants. So a team that you know, most people think the Panthers would be most most people will think the think the Panthers would be pretty bad. So I think most people will think the Giants it's a must win game for them. Yeah, going into the bye week, you expect them to kind of take care of business, win this game, and it'll kind of show us if they have life or not uh, going into the bye week. And the Saints in week 14, I thought was pretty interesting. You know, if either of these teams, like, you know, if I'm not saying it will be the case, but if they're fighting for a playoff spot, I think it'll be a big game. I think the winner of this game, like if they're fighting for a playoff spot, the winner of this game will be maybe alive still. And the other team will probably be out of it. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. It's hard to predict that far in the future. But also, the Giants were on a little bit of a run last year with DeVito. Like, they were starting to win some games. They beat the Packers, and it's like, all right, what's happening here? Like, and, and they're getting hot, and people are maybe getting being a little too optimistic. And they go play the Saints, and, like, the Giants are going to continue to take care of business, right? And now the Saints completely outplayed them. And then I was like, all right, there's the Giants, right? Um, so, where and here we go, a year later, late late in the year. Like, where are they, it's going to give us an idea where these teams are at comparison to last year. So I thought that was a pretty interesting game there. And obviously the divisional games are pretty big. Let's see if they cannot get their ass kicked completely, uh, get the snot pounded out of them, I should say, against the Cowboys twice a year again. Uh, Eagles, they handled business. Last time I played them, could they, could they give them some issues? Uh, and the Commanders kind of teams put them in the same tier. I feel like 50% of the people think the Commanders finished third. 50% of the people think the Giants finished third over the Commanders. So uh, it seems like they're pretty uh, even in, in the eyes of the fans, I suppose. So uh, those will be big games as well. But, of course, there could be surprises. So fan takes, we have quite a few of them here. Uh, some ex-subscribers are guaranteed to get theirs on here. Cam Sullivan, new offensive identity. Yeah, I talked about I think it's going to be dink and dunk and try to open up the surprise, the surprise plays. Um, we talked about losing Saquon, gaining neighbors. What does it mean? Uh, even with the big contract, how long is Jones leash? That's a good question. After adding lock. Um, I think, you know, Dable, I I think he won't be afraid to make the change. Like if Jones is really, really struggling, I don't think he'd be afraid to make the change. He's not going to be super hesitant. But the plan, really, in their minds right now, as no games have been played this year, in my opinion, is like he's the guy. Like we, if he's healthy, he's going to start all year. That's their mindset. Um, you know, so I think it's more of the the durability is in the back of their minds. The reason for adding Drew Locke. Um, but yeah, it's a big question. Will we see Drew Locke this year? Linebacker rotation with Burns, Thibodeau. Uh, those guys off the edge. Yeah, Simmons, how will they use him? Will they use him in different ways? Okereke and Ajilari. Yeah, we got a touchdown. Ajilari could be used in unique ways. Simmons could be that guy. Yeah, could be. Could, I talked about Shane Bowen, you know, coming from Tennessee. Uh, you know, could he use Simmons like that in that unique sub package type way, like rushing from different spots? Uh, yeah, I think that's a possibility, actually. So, uh, be be pretty interesting. Um, but I think the starters are pretty set. It's just, yeah, who are the key rotation guys? Take, Neighbors leads the rookie receivers in both yards and touchdowns. Definitely can see that. I'm counting on him to lead rookies and touches. Um, it's just, you, could other receivers get more of like the the uh, bigger plays? Like the and he, But Neighbors is so good after the catch, though. So he makes up for it. If it's underneath stuff, he can, he can make up for it for stuff like that. Answer not, offensive identity with Barkley and red flag at quarterback still or without Barkley. Yeah, I kind of touched on that, kind of given it's still going to be underneath, but maybe with less of pounding the football. But they didn't really do it. There was some games they pound the football, but there were some games they really, they were, when they were good two years ago, it was a lot of dink and dunk, just getting the ball out quick. And they'll do that. Will backup QB be better than the starter? Yeah, I mean, there's a chance if Drew Locke gets in there, he's pretty he's pretty solid um, or better than Daniel Jones. I always, I still, when I watched Drew Locke looking at last year, I'm like, I still think this guy, like, there's talent in there. Is he going to be great? No. Uh, but, um, how, I guess offensive line play could fact you know for could make Drew Lock struggle as well as Daniel Jones. It depends a lot depends on the offensive line, uh, O line improvement or lateral movement. It's a really good question. Uh, they add Illuminor to play that right tackle spot, or do they assist on Evan Neal, who I think I'm surprised on where he how he's struggling. Uh, maybe he just needs a different scheme, like a specific scheme. It could be the case. Uh, but who do they start there? Uh, does the additions on the interior does it change anything? Uh, it's a really good question. I like to think they're better than last year. You know, Thomas has got to stay healthy as well. Um, but it is, it's something we're waiting to see and could decide a lot for this team. Um, yeah, how do they use the tight ends? Could be a sneaky room. You know, you know Bellinger is pretty pretty sneaky. 
Uh, and he's, uh, once again, the guy here. He's a tough tight end. D-line, edge room. Yeah, we touched on that. Isaiah Simmons, we kind of just, with Cam Sullivan, we bringing up Simmons kind of reminded me they got Simmons and they could, I think he could be used in different ways, different alignments. I'm starting to think that, so it'll be interesting. And Banks expansion, yeah, has a ton of upside. Could be really, really good. Going to use him more in zone coverage. Will that be a learning curve? How will that go? How will the adjustments go? Um, and then uh, what do we got? Uh, Cowboys fan as a Dallas fan. What I'll be watching, how will the young secondary continue to develop? I'm a big fan of Banks. I think he'll be good. Yeah, all eyes on Banks. Really solid. How will it adjust? Uh, it's a very young secondary. How will guys like Newbin play? Um, will there be adjustments for him because the lack of speed, you know, the NFL speed will be, I think that's where he'll be start a little slow maybe, but he's a really good instinctive playmaker in the back end. Um, and he, he kind of just got going too. So he had a lot of upside because in high school he was, he was uh, more of like, they used him in wildcat and they used him at corner and, um, and then he went to Minnesota and they're like, yeah, I think we're going to put you at free safety. And he really came along, you know, learning that position. So a lot of upside there um, for Newbin and some of those young guys. Uh, Brian Burns finally become elite. I already, uh, he thinks he's already elite and people don't. Yeah, people doubt him a little bit. Um, it's hard to say he's elite right now, but yeah, I could I could see him getting like if he plays if we say he's elite after this year, it wouldn't surprise me. Like, you know, um, I think he's that good. I think he can get on track here. What will the running back rotation look like? Yeah, it could be uh, very curious about that as well. It could be somebody else I thought mentioned it. Uh, Patrick did as well. You see at the top right, uh, RB2 battles underrated. And, you know, you're factoring in Eric Gray, Tyrone Tracy. I like both guys as a prospect. Eric Gray's tape was really good at Oklahoma. He played at Tennessee as well. He was good there. But he's really good at Oklahoma. Really shifty. Um, some of the nastiest jukes and spins. Um, you know, just a, doesn't have that long speed, but either the Singletary, I think Gray probably has a little more of it than Singletary. So could Gray be a factor? And Tyrone Tracy, for just switching to running back, he really filled out his build in his running style like that quickly. That that says something to me. Good athlete, can catch the ball, former receiver. So Tracy has a ton of upside. Man, I think with the style... I think it's more kind of going back to his question as well. I really think it's a three headed rotation. Uh, I, for the style of offense, this is, I think it should be. I, I want to see a lot of Tracy. I want to see a lot of all these guys, um, you know, because you don't want to get predictable either. Like Singletary could be your main runner, but when he's in the game, you're running the ball when he's not, you're maybe you're throwing the ball to the ex receiver. Tracy is in the backfield. Um, so you don't want to get predictable either, but um, I they have they have some guys here that can play. So I'm I'm very curious about that. Another big thing is uh, the fact that Dayball will be calling the play. Yeah, that's that's big as well. Uh, very. So how much of a difference will that make? Yeah, I guess I didn't really think about that. If he's calling the plays, like that's a really good offensive mind. Um, Again, I, I'm pretty confident, like I talked about mainly in the beginning of this video, what this offensive identity is going to be. If it works, it's going to work well. It's going to be quick, quick, fast. They're going to have surprise shots. So uh, it's what it's what he wants to do there. So I think it could be good if he's calling the plays. O-line, new coach. Yeah, sometimes it just makes all the difference if you have the right uh, coaching or the right scheme, and blocking scheme in there. Uh, big question is who starts at right tackle. I think it's going to be a Luminor, but we'll see. And does the interior – it's not the biggest names on the interior. So how much of a, uh, cause they try to get the bigger guards, but they were just getting in free agency, but they were just getting paid way, way too much. So, um, yeah, like how much change will it be? It's gotta be better than last year. It's definitely going to be better than last year. Just how much is the question? Uh, they do want to get the ball out quick though. And if they do that successfully, it'll help the offensive line's jobs will be easier. Uh, retake post thoughts after one year of Bobby O signing with the Giants. Yeah, I didn't love that signing, you know, because he was, uh, you know, playing pretty well in the zone coverage defense, the zone defense of a 4 3 zone defense, I should say, of the Colts, whether it was cover two under Eberflus, uh, and then they went to more of a cover three under Bradley. Uh, and then he goes to a straight man coverage blitz 3 4 defense of Martindale, and typically linebackers that, in Okereke has been good before that, but he hasn't been great. Like typically linebackers have a hard time with scheme changes. And I was just a little surprised that they had that much faith, but he played pretty well given the scheme change. 
Um, he played better than expected, so I was impressed. Uh, and then another scheme change this year. So, and it's different than the other ones that he's played, any of the ones that he's played. So, um, he's going to fill out all the boxes here. So, I mean, if he play, if let's say this, if Okereke plays very well in yet a different scheme, uh, yeah, like 4 3 cover two under Eberflus, 4 3 cover three under Bradley, and then Martindale's was a man coverage heavy blitz defense. Now we're going to a cover four low blitz. Uh, he's going to fill out all the boxes. So if he plays good yet again, I think everyone's got to be underrating him. I think he might be one of the better linebackers in football. So that's actually a guy to watch here. Uh, that's It's always tough for linebackers with the scheme changes. Um, so he's done good so far. That's impressive. Uh, but it's always, for some reason, line, linebackers the position that have the hardest times with coaches or scheme changes. So um, we'll see. Cornerback situation. Yeah, somebody else mentioned it too. Uh, yeah, the next guy. Uh, what does it say? Wild, magnific magnificent. Uh, who's cornerback two? Nick McLeod or Cordell Flott? Does this matter or are we just cooked? Uh, yeah, I was talking about the cornerback situation. Yeah, and I mentioned a little bit ago, and I said I was going to talk about more because I knew some of the fans asked, uh, the Giants fans here asked about uh, corners. But yeah, on paper, doesn't look that great. They look pretty young, inexperienced. They're switching. Some of those guys are new, but some of those guys are switching schemes. Like we talked about coverage-wise, coverage so would that be a factor? Uh, but I guess the positive with this defense is they have a chance to mix things up and be versatile and give different looks. And that's a good thing. Different looks and mixing things up, that's a good thing with defense, like throwing teams off. Um, and I think that's possible because, well, they have Banks – who is an outside, he's going to be an outside corner. He's going to be a good corner for them, obviously. Uh, they drafted Andrew Phillips, who was an outside corner for Kentucky, but based on his play style, you can see a lot, and he played out well outside, but based on his play style, his strengths and weaknesses were underneath, attacking underneath, tackling, uh, physical underneath. You think his play strengths fit slot corner. could be a really good slot corner at the next level. So he can play either spot. I'd imagine he doesn't get snaps in only one spot. I'd imagine we'll see him at both. And maybe that type of corner's taken over the league. Witherspoon example last year for the Seahawks rookie. I uh, actually played more in the slot than outside, but close to 50-50. But just being able to be in both spots. So Phillips could be that type of guy. Cordell Flott, I thought, yeah, could have been a better slot than outside, to be honest, but he can play either spot. And then Jalen Mills, who comes in, who's supposed to be a safety, but he's had, he spent time throughout his career at corner safety in the slot, you know, so he can play different spots. Uh, they have McLeod, they have other guys as well. So um, I think they can mix it up. I don't think they're going to stick towards one thing. I, I hope that Banks is always in on the corner, and he will be at the outside corner spot. So. Um, even though they don't look great on paper, they have options. They have versed out options. So that could be a reason to keep it up to keep, stay optimistic about it. And then, uh, Ian mentioned, do they sign anybody else? I'd want teams are waiting for their guys to sign one of these guys and somebody's, you know, Justin Simmons is out there. I know he's not a corner, but just an example, um, Xavier Howard's still out there. I guess these guys will get signed. You know, they'll get signed at some point. Uh, I don't know if it'll be the giants on those big time guys. We'll have to wait and see, but what people always forget is, is after preseason, there is that period where teams have to make a lot of cuts, and a lot often there's good players cut, and then teams will bring guys back in, or there's some young under the radar guys that just they get cut because they don't fit, and they realize that in training camp preseason, but they'll fit somewhere else. Maybe a team like the Giants. I'd watch out for the Giants around that time, getting some guys that actually can contribute. Um, so that'll be that's always a fun time of year that people forget about. So I'd watch out for that. They'll do. I think they'll do some digging at specifically at that position around there, and then. Look Logan says Drew Locke is a bold prediction. Drew Locke will play more games than Daniel Jones because he's better. He's a better QB. And uh, yeah, some people think that we could see it. I, 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 I talked about, it. I think Locke, I, he's got that talent in there. Like it's not an, an insane amount of talent, but, um, and with this style of offense, it could simplify things for him. Uh, I do worry about the offense line, but that comes for any, whoever's at quarterback for the giants, but we'll see if Jones is healthy. I do think he's better. But I guess is even if Jones is healthy, is he the same as two years ago? Is he being game planned for more properly? Is, is he in his head a little more? Um, you know, is, is he just not the same guy? Because he needs his legs as well. So even if he's healthy, is it like a tweaked or a different version of Daniel Jones? Uh, but if Jones is himself and healthy, I, I'd say even though I, 
I don't want to. I'm. I don't want to say I'm a Drew Lock guy because that makes it sound like I think he's great, you know. But I, I do like Drew Lock a little bit. I think he's maybe a little better than people people think. But is he a starting quarterback in this league? And it's a different question. Uh, but he possibly can be in this offense. So, uh, but I think this is possible. I suppose Drew Lock could end up looking better, whether it's due to Jones struggling because he's just not the same player or, or post-injury or Jones being injured, Drew Locke coming in and playing pretty well, then people are going to say Drew Locke is better. We can see that scenario. We can see it. Um, but yeah, that it's a lot of good takes, always from the fans. Love it. It's going to do it for this one. Check out the playlist full of these videos on the channel uh, and check out our sponsors. Liquid IV GLD shop code GOAT for a percentage off. Links pinned in the comments for that. And if you want to get involved, our Twitter slash X down there as well. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.